Welcome to The Pointy End. I'm Keith Sutherland. Today my guest is Chantel Morrison and Chantel's an organiser of Noah's Hope CDH fundraiser. I have to say that, CDH. <laughs> Explain to me what CDH is and um, how did you get to be involved in this sort of a fundraiser? So CDH stands for a congenital diaphragmatic hernia. It is where um, generally babies in utero, they develop a hole in their diaphragm, so the muscle that controls all our breathing. And because there's a hole there, anything that sits in our abdominal content, so stomach, bowel, spleen, uh, kidneys, liver, anything like that can actually move into the chest cavity. So they can have a hole on either the left side, the right side, or both, which is extremely rare. The left side's the most common. Because that happens, the baby is unable to develop and grow lungs. Um, underdeveloped, uh, quite minimal lungs in some babies, and their survival chance it can be you know, quite small, up to 10%, if they're um, not shown to have the lung capacity there. Is this a rare situation? Yeah. Because I hadn't really heard of it. And No, most people haven't. So it's one in two and a half to 3,000 babies. It is a worldwide condition. They don't have a cause yet. They don't have a cure for it. It is just something that happens. Uh, they think it's sort of a genetic and environmental factor. They're still figuring that part of it out. So no doubt that you've got NOAA is special to you. Yes. Just run through briefly, um, briefly what the situation was, how it was diagnosed, and a bit of that journey, and then we'll go into what the fundraiser is about. So Noah is our little boy. Yes. He, he, he turned one in, on March 11th this year. Uh, we were diagnosed at our 20 week ultrasound. That's the most common time for families to be diagnosed. Um, but some families do go undiagnosed though, so it's not until birth they actually find out their baby has this defect. Um, so we were diagnosed here, then sent off to Royal Melbourne because Benigo, unfortunately, or well not Royal Melbourne, sorry, Royal Women's in Melbourne, yeah. Benigo um, don't have the ability to handle these sort of babies once they're here. They can stabilise if needed. Um, so we were sent down to Royal Melbourne, which then involved four weekly ultrasound appointments, meeting with doctors, surgeons, neonatologists, touring the Royal Children's. Um, we had a fetal MRI at around 35 weeks. So originally Noah was given a 75% survival chance. He had stomach and bowel in the original scans. After the MRI, we dropped to a 50% survival chance. Uh, That's had... so worrying for you guys. Yeah, it was a bit of a shock. We weren't expecting it. Um, we were given the results of the MRI and we were reading through and they seemed pretty terrifying to read it. And then the doctor explained that his chances had dropped more. So that was a, a pretty big thing. We sat there and we're like, you mean 50% survival chance? And she was like, well, yes. Um, so that kind of turned everything even more upside down for us. In saying that, a lot of families here are less survival chance. So we're still pretty lucky we had a 50-50 or two at least. So did you get a lot of support at the time? And it's being something that would be unbeknownst to most families and young parents, of course. Yeah. Um, was there support from the Royal Children's and whoever else was involved in it? Because as I said, it's just such a rare thing. I hadn't heard of it before. Yeah. Um, and that sort of helps you and other people involved were they there to sort of explain to you what had happened to their child or anything like that, or um, you're really on your own because it's so rare? We haven't come across another Bendigo family yet. Okay. Um, but we, I did do a bit of Googling, as most parents do when they find out their child's sick, and we came across CDH Australia. So CDH Australia is the only Australian organisation there for CDH families. It was started by a CDH parent who unfortunately lost her baby back in the okay. 90s. Um, so that was where our support started to come from. They were able to link us in with other families all across Australia and through Facebook chat groups, private messaging, we started to connect with other families that were going through this. Um, I did meet up with a couple more families that were down Melbourne, Geelong way, and we're quite close friends now. Sadly, one of them also lost their baby oh, in May yes. last year. Um, so it's hard when that happens because you kind of sit there looking at your child and you're like, okay, yeah. mine's here, why isn't theirs? But, yeah, so CDH Australia is what's given us that support. They're what helped get us through. And they liaise with medical professionals and everything like that to help with research, get more information to hand out to families. The Royal Children's, the staff there, were incredible. We had one of the best DNAs and surgeons you could ever ask for. And they gave us as much information as they possibly could before Noah was born to prepare us as best they could. Um, and they were incredible once he was here. The nurses, everything on the butterfly ward down there are just invaluable. So between them and CDH Australia, we pulled through <laughs> and we still have the ongoing connection with CDH Australia and we're still linked in to all the support groups and have made some amazing friendships through that and met some incredible babies. Um, 
moving on from that then, and I know I don't want to focus on this because <laughs> it's so difficult for you and no. for everybody. Um, why did you want to do a fundraiser to, was it awareness, to make some money? Why did you want to get involved? Because fundraising's a big deal, it takes a lot of effort, as yes. you already know, and we'll come to the dates, etc. But why was it that you were motivated to have this fundraiser to sort of extend from where, because you're already going through enough as it is. Yeah. This is another extension of trying to help that situation. Yeah, so for us, we didn't want our child to survive and I'm one of those mums are just doing nothing. We say, oh, we're gonna help, we're gonna help, we're gonna give back to an organisation that helped us in so many ways. So no, I'm not doing that, that's it. So I said to my husband, you know, I wanna do a fundraiser and we thought oh, maybe just a silent auction, that'll do, you know, raise some money, pass it on to CDH Australia. Um, and because CDH Australia don't get funding from anywhere either, it's pure volunteer based and any money that comes in is through the fundraisers or donations from people. So then I caught up with a friend one day and I'm like, this is what I want to do. And she goes, well, how about we go a little bit bigger? And in the end, it's turned into this massive gala evening. So the point of it will be to honour all the CDH babies, um, especially our little Noah. He's the reason we're doing it. Mm -hmm. We always said he survived and he's meant for greatness. And if that is telling half of Australia about CDH, then that's incredible. So it's to honour them, um, honour our angel babies especially, because there is a lot of angel babies from CDH, and to raise the awareness because most people I talk to don't know what it is. You mentioned the words to them yeah. and they're like, oh, is that like just a hole in the umbilical area? And you're like, no, no, no. Um, and to raise the funds for CDH Australia. So they desperately need the funds to be able to keep supporting families, to help with the research. And without an organisation like that, families like myself, you, you are alone, you do feel very isolated yeah. because people don't understand. So yeah, that's the point of it, to okay. really get it out there. <laughs> now, it's on the 11th of July at the Conservatory, the All Seasons in Bendigo. Yes. Are you looking for extra support by way of auction items, people to come along to the event, um, corporates to take tables, sponsorships? What are you yeah. really looking for for that? Because as you said, it's two things. It's about raising funds, yep. much needed funds when there's no other support there. And obviously getting the awareness out there because, and then I'll yes. come into some of the high profile people which you've got <laughs> yeah. and you've got a um, wonderful ambassador. But yeah, just are you looking for support and help yep. up to this point? Definitely. We're still taking in donations of any size. Um, we're looking to put together one more big live auction item. So it'd be great if we can get a few places on board to create something amazing for someone to bid on. Um, but yeah, any business that wants to donate, we're greatly appreciating that. And we do thank them by placing their logo onto material that we have to help promote them as a donor for the fundraiser. Ticket sales, that's where we're really pushing now. So we've probably got about 100 uh, attending at the moment. And you'd like, what, We'd like to hit suppose, about 200 plus, to yep. 250, so we have more there. Um, so we're really, you know, big shout out with the corporates to buy a table, bring your employees along, you know, have a great night, pop it into tax stuff because it's for a charity event. So that's sort of an extra bonus for them. Um, but yeah, to really get the bums in the seats, to, uh, there's no point us getting all these items if we don't have anyone to sell it to. So we're just pushing it. We've got three weeks left till ticket sales are cut off. And so um, yeah, now's the time to jump on, get your tickets, do keep donating to us. We have a use for everything, so. And you've yep. got um, your ambassador, Jacinta Allen now. Yes. Jacinta's a very busy <laughs> transport minister. We see her almost daily on the television, opening some new station. Yep. The regional rail networks mm -hmm. open on the weekend and so on. But um, how did you get Jacinta to be the ambassador for your organisation? So it was last year, uh, Jacinta was door knocking just before all the election and stuff. And she's going around introducing herself to the locals of Bendigo, which was really appreciated. And I had Noah in my arms when she knocked on the door and she asked about Noah and if he was healthy. And I'm like, oh yeah, he sort of is now. And we got talking about what he went through in his condition. And she started talking about that her daughter was actually born um, with quite a severe condition with her organs on the outside of her body. And it turned out we even share the same neonatal surgeon. So we really did get talking um, about a lot of things. And that just really stuck with me that she took the time to do that and chat. So when I decided to do this, I thought, no, I want an ambassador. So to my husband, I'm going to approach this in Toronto because she knows what it's like to be a parent to go through this and not know if you're taking your child home. And I think she could really help us get it out there. 
So I emailed off to her office <laughs> and then she, um, I got a reply back saying she'd love to meet with me and met up with her like a week later and she's like, I'd love to be a part of this. So Isn't that nice? You hear a lot about politicians, <laughs> what they don't do, but then when someone like this, that she's experienced the heartache as what you have yep. um, as a mother and um, for her to get on board is really great. So yeah. now how does someone get in touch with you, i.e. to um, donate something? Is there a website? How do they yep. do it to sort of try and keep in touch and I know there's promotion and hopefully yes. <laughs> our program today will get it out there as well. Um, so we have our website which is www.noahshope4cdh.com. We'll put that up and pull it through. Yep. On. <laughs> um, so on there there is um, a link to our email. There's also the spot on there to purchase your tickets um, so, but our email is just noahshopeatoutlook.com so they can just email directly straight through to me and let me know that they want to be involved. Um, if they don't want to go via the webpage. So that's probably the easiest way between work and the kids. I can just kind of check emails in between and, and then I can get back to people. Um, but yeah, so the webpage is our main point for everything. We just do ask, so if people are purchasing to corporate tables to email through to us, because we actually do the purchasing of that a bit different, just so we can track the corporates and get the stuff from them that we need. Okay. The table. Finally, I noticed that um, on your program that you've got, you've got some very high profile doctors, surgeons, specialists. Yes. How do you get somebody like that, hopefully to come to Bendigo on the night? Because they're busy people, they've got mm. lots of commitments, yep. but somehow you're special and yeah. Noah's special, yeah. so, um, that they're coming to Bendigo. So how did yep. you arrange that? That just seems pretty special. Yeah, um, well CDH Australia are quite thankful for what we're doing um, and the magnitude of the event. So we managed to get the president and the founder more than willing to want to come up and speak in Bendigo. They're both down Melbourne way. Um, and then in terms of our medical speakers, we're still waiting for our surgeon to get back, but we're pretty hopeful. Um, but up at the Royal Children's, they're very dedicated to the CDH babies. And our neonatologist, Dr. David Tingay, is the lung guru up there. So anything he can do to help something that's based around a, primarily a lung condition, um, he wanted to get on board with. So I sent our neonate and our surgeon, Dr. Joe Comrie, off emails and I'm like hey I'm doing this and at appointments I'm kind of slipping in there while I'm asking questions about Noah's health do you want to come up and speak and um, yeah more than happy to so they're like no we'd love to be involved what do you need us to talk about can't wait for the event so well Chantel in. thank you so much for appearing on the pointy end today congratulations well, I know you've got enough on your plate yeah. with Noah but what you're doing is sensational thank to you. have as I say such high profile people coming to town um, Jacinta yep. Allen as your ambassador. I know it's going to be a great night on the 11th of um, July at the Conservatory and yes. we will put that up um, so that people can contact you hopefully with some items for the auction, take some corporate tables and maybe some sponsorship. Yep. So thank you so much for appearing no, on the program today. We really appreciate it. Thank you.